The Master Keys series of mechanical keyboards from Cooler Master features genuine Cherry MX switches and the flexibility of choice. Whether you want small, medium, or large, you can pick your size and pick your color with RGB and clear white LED backlighting options. Click the sponsor link in the description for more information. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing uh, benchmarking, testing, and some evaluation of my March build. Uh, I know it's early April already, but I actually built the system in March, so I'm actually getting caught back up with my monthly builds. If you're not familiar, I plan out a couple builds at the beginning of every month, and then I build one of those systems, and then I follow up and test it and benchmark it and give you guys my feedback on the experience. And this has been a pretty fun build. It's my first ever actual full Ryzen system based on the AMD Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. Uh, I also have a GTX 1070 in there from Galax. I also have some cooler master components in the uh, V650 power supply, as well as the Master Case Pro 6, which is a brand new case from Cooler Master, as well as their new Master Air Pro 4, uh, the cooler that's in there, which is also doing a pretty good job and looking pretty nice while we're at it. Now, I've actually already overclocked this CPU, so I basically went to dial in the same overclock that I got when I did my Ryzen overclocking video, and if you guys are inter interested in that, because I kind of walked through the overclocking process, a link to that is also up in the corner. Due to some instability issues, I actually dialed the overclock back just a tad. 3.8 gigahertz was what I hit across all of the cores, still plenty fast. And then with that dialed in, I went onto the GPU and basically dialed the same GPU overclock I had when I tested that uh, graphics card back in December, plus 126 megahertz on the GPU, plus 202 on the memory, uh, and then maxing the power and temperature targets. The fans I set to 60%, which uh, gave a nice balance between a little bit more noise, but plenty more cooling performance. Uh, that gave me a base clock of 1721, a boost of 1911. Uh, it did get up past 2100 megahertz max, but of course that leveled off after temperatures started to rise. Uh, I was getting about 2020 megahertz average on the GPU core clock, and the temperatures uh, were again very nice. 50 degrees was what it was at at idle, and that's with the fans not spinning up at all, so zero noise generally. Generation. Uh, and then 84C was what it hit max load while benchmarking, but that was kind of more rare when I was actually running the gaming benchmarks and doing a much more reasonable load on it, like you do at home while you're just playing a video game. It was just getting up into the mid 70s, which is perfectly fine for an overclocked GTX 1070. Next, let's move into some sound testing, and I will say that this system is very, very quiet, especially with the fans set to silent mode, of course. And even with the fans at silent mode, uh, the cooling was pretty adequate. Uh, I will mention that I did need to use a fan splitter to connect those two front fans up to the motherboard, not because of a lack of motherboard headers, but simply because the cables on the included 120 millimeter fans at the front of the case weren't quite long enough to reach all of the headers on the motherboard, so it was just simpler to connect those both up to a single header towards the front of the board. Some fan extensions uh, might be helpful for this case in the future, Cooler Master, if you're watching. Uh, and then beyond that, I wanted to do some temperature testing with these panels, because they pop up up and down, and they give you a little bit more airflow when they're up, but they will let a little bit more noise come out. I didn't notice a huge difference in temperature with the panels open. It might have been a degree or two cooler, However, the temperature is kind of fluctuating here in my garage, so I don't want to say that's a scientific test. What I will do, though, is give you guys a sound test with those panels open versus closed. So there you go guys, not a huge difference in uh, noise generation with the panels open versus closed, but nice to have that option, I suppose. What I would probably do running this system full time is leave them closed most of the time, and then if I was doing something that was really uh, heavy lifting, like say I was queuing up a video to render out or something, would pop those open, let a little bit more air get, get in without having to worry about the noise generation. Let's move into some gaming benchmarks though with the GTX 1070. This is obviously a gaming system. Ran all of these tests at 2560 by 1440, which I find to be a nice mid-range resolution for a GTX 1070. And here you go, benchmarks.
So obviously this system can handle the games no problem. I'm not doing a direct side-by-side -side comparison to an Intel system, but I will be doing a little bit more of that coming up very soon because although this system has a Ryzen 7 CPU, hey, look, Ryzen 5. That should be available very soon. So uh, hey, my monthly build for April, which is gonna be happening, happening also very soon, uh, probably you can expect to have some Ryzen 5 influence going on there. But since this is not just a gaming PC, it's also made for other things, uh, let's do some video encoding tests. So now that you guys have had a taste of the performance with this system, let's wrap up with some closing thoughts. First off, the motherboard, the ASRock X370 Tai Chi, I think did a fantastic job here. Uh, I like the look of it. It's a little bit more distinct with the black and white aesthetic, but all in all, it got the job done. And even though it's sort of more towards the higher end when it comes to ASRock's product stack, it's still very, very reasonably priced, especially when you compare it to like, say, uh, the Asus uh, Crosshair 6. Now, the SSD, if you guys didn't already notice, I actually swapped out. Uh, I dropped a Toshiba in there, just, just full disclosure. Um, that was just because I actually needed my sand disk because it's an external drive that I usually use with a bunch of games. I don't want to copy everything, but um, there that is. It shouldn't affect the benchmarks or performance in the slightest. Let's talk about RGB LEDs while we're at this. Uh, the case is a little bit limited in that respect. I was actually pretty surprised when I first booted this system up uh, to, that this has a blue LED fan for the exhaust here from Cooler Master. It's just, it definitely makes this a blue accented case along with the blue accent line across the front there, which I suppose matches as long as you want blue to be part of your aesthetic. Uh, Cooler Master is also producing this case with red LEDs, so red accent at the front and red LED fan. All in all though, I kinda would've preferred if it was just a standard black fan here for the exhaust and let you do whatever the heck you want inside. Also that LED at the front, Again, it looks nice, but without it being RGB, it's hard to have it match with the rest of the system if you are going for RGB. All that said, if you're okay with blue and you want everything, everything to match, like I, have, I found I, I ended up with kind of a red, white, and blue color scheme here. It's red on the bottom because of the motherboard LED and the LEDs on the bottom of the Galax 1070. Blue up top as well as on the front, and then of course the white accents on the mother, motherboard, which doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't give you the flexibility that you have with like the full size, full RGB system like I have going on back there. All that said, RGB is an aesthetic thing, and the final thing that I really wish you could do that you can't, at least as far as I could tell on the motherboard or on the graphics card, is turn them all off. You, you gotta have some lights going on in there. So, all that said, aesthetically, this wasn't my favorite when it comes to the lighting, but I thought the case overall looks pretty nice. Uh, it is fairly large, but was able to fit everything in there really easily, and there's tons of extra space. I actually, was actually looking at this system, like, this is like, like, like version one of this system where you get everything in there and up and running. There's so much extra stuff and extra space in here to add more stuff. Like easily you could drop another graphics card in there. Easily additional expansion slots could be used for adding more storage or a RAID card or a capture card or anything like that. Uh, you got, of course, tons more space for SSDs. I removed an entire drive cage. You have tons of room for more drive cages. Five and a quarter inch bays at the front. Uh, you could, of course, add more memory here. It's only got 16 gigs. We got two additional slots. So tons and tons of upgrade potential with this system, which I always like to have. All in all, I found this to be an incredibly powerful system, and I'm really happy that with the uh, AMD Ryzen platform, you can get a build like this with eight cores, 16 threads, tons of room for expansion. It's an AMD system, but it's still modern, and it's got all of the uh, bells and whistles that you would expect with a modern build, and it's coming in at way, way, way less than it would cost to get an Intel eight core platform with similar performance. Gaming, of course, is a question we can continue to discuss when it comes to Ryzen versus Intel's CPUs, but more on that, of course, in upcoming videos. In particular, I'm going to be attacking that one more time because I've got Ryzen 5 content that's in the very near future, so stay tuned for that. 
All in all though guys, uh, I think you guys would be happy with this build. Also of course check out uh, the two parts lists I have in the description because if you kit it out like I have here, it's gonna cost around $1,400. But if you're willing to swap out a few parts here and there, you can get basically equivalent performance for around $1,200. And for $1,200, I think uh, a system like this is absolutely beastly. Uh, especially if you're doing anything like content creation or if you're doing gaming and streaming at the same time or if you're doing higher end stuff, anything that's really, really intensive on the CPU and needs multiple threads. Thank you guys so much for watching this video though. I hope you have enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. If you did, leave your comments in the comment section below. Give me some suggestions for April builds because I'm going to be working on those very soon. And as always, thank you for watching.